my name is Mark Fulcher and I'm going to show you an approach to examining the cervical spine. So first we're going to ask Jesse to take his shirt off. So as with the other joints, the first thing we're going to do is have a close inspection of the cervical spine. And when we're thinking about the spine, we also need to think about is there any wasting or, or changes down the arm, as neurologic problems in the cervical spine obviously can have an effect on the arm. So just in general terms, his overall alignment is symmetric, there's no obvious wasting or other problems. If we get you to turn side on, Jesse, we're going to have a look at the alignment of his neck and shoulders, having a look particularly to see if the normal cervical lordosis is maintained, having a look at his posture, are his shoulders slumped, is his chin too far forward? And in general terms, he looks comfortable there. We're going to get him to turn and face away from us, and we're going to have a look again. Is there any uh, obvious curvature? Is there any obvious asymmetry wasting any of these muscles? So. In general terms, our inspection here is, uh, is pretty normal. While he's standing up, we can also palpate his cervical spine. So if we start at the top of the cervical spine, we can work our way down in the midline, looking for midline tenderness. The vertebra prominence is C7, so that's a useful landmark to find where we are, so we can palpate up or down from there. So we're palpating, is there any midline tenderness? We can also palpate in the occipital region. Sometimes we can have trigger points up there which can cause cervicogenic headache. And we also palpate down in the upper cervical, upper traps region, levator scapulae region. And quite often we'll find some very tender trigger points which can be a cause of symptoms. So having a good palpate on both sides and around this area. So Jesse, if we can just get you to turn and face the camera. So we're going to have a look at his cervical range of motion. So if we can get you to put your chin down on your chest, we'll have a look at cervical flexion, just adding a little bit of extra pressure, any pain or limitation with that. We look at cervical extension, any pain or limitation with that. So in each of those movements we can uh, combine movements, so we have extension and rotation. And then we can have flexion and rotation. Standing up, if we look at lateral rotation, so look over your shoulder and look over your shoulder. So any pain or problems, any restriction, and then side flexion. So can you put your ear on your shoulder and then ear on your shoulder. And these movements can be quite provocative with people with cervical spine problems. If people are having uh, brachial plexus traction type injuries, these can also be uncomfortable. So having a look at his range of motion there, uh, everything looks normal. While he's standing up, we can also do Spurling's test, which is a test for uh, radicular pain. So we have the athlete turn to look at the side of his pain, and then we take the, the neck into extension, and then we compress or provide an axial load and see whether that's a provocative movement. Athletes with radicular pain will often have pain in their shoulder, and it may refer down into their arm. Next, we're going to get Jesse to sit on the side of the table. So I find this a good opportunity to assess the upper limb neurology. So I do a basic neurologic examination. So the first thing I do is palpate uh, and assess the uh, sensation to light touch. So lateral deltoid is, is predominantly C5. The lateral elbow is C5. Move down to the thumb, C6. Middle finger, C7. Little finger is C8 and the medial elbow is T1. So we're asking and comparing between the sides, does this feel normal? Is there any difference between the sides? So then from there I assess the power in each of the myotomes. So if we can get you to bring your shoulders up at the side, Jesse. So holding there, that's assessing his deltoid and we can palpate the muscle, that's C5. Stop me pushing your hands down, so Biceps is C5 also. Wrist extension, so if we turn your hands over, stop me pushing your wrist down. That's C6. Push out against me, Jesse. Don't let me push your hand towards you, so you're doing this movement. So that's triceps, C7. If you make a fist or a claw grip, don't let me pull your fist outwards. So fist clenching is uh, C8, and then fingers wide apart. Stop me pushing your fingers together. That's assessing the T1 myotome. So we've done a basic screen of the upper limb uh, or the cervical spine nerve roots. We're then going to assess his reflexes. So his biceps jerk is C5. Brachioradialis is predominantly C6. 
and then his triceps reflex is C7. So I think it's very important to do an assessment of the upper limb neurology. Often uh, it's normal in athletes with cervical pain, but I think it's an important step. From there, I like the athlete to lie down in a prone position, so we get you to lie flat in your back, Jesse. And I think this just gives me another opportunity to palpate the cervical spine and the structures around the cervical spine. So again, find vertebral prominence and then palpate up from there in the midline, occipital region, and then in the muscles and soft tissues around the cervical spine, looking for any tenderness or trigger points. So that's how I conduct a basic examination of a footballer with neck pain.